Welcome back, guys. I've got a very special guest with me today, fellow YouTuber and Cardano enthusiast, Sean Benson. How are you? Hi, Jason. I'm doing well. Uh, thanks for having me on your channel. Anytime, anytime. Hit the likes and subscribes, and I'll leave Sean's details in the comments down below if you want to go and check out his channel. does a lot of good stuff on Cardano and uh, what Charles Hoskinson is saying now. We, we want to have a look at today, in particular, Cardano, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats in the market to ADA over the next five years, 10 years. And if it doesn't happen, we hold Sean wholly and solely accountable for anything that goes wrong with Cardano. Tell us about your YouTube channel and then let's get into your portfolio, like why you're holding these things. What made you start on YouTube and cryptocurrency? Again, thanks for having me, Jason. I've been in crypto uh, uh, for you know years at this point, kind of, it kind of just started off kind of you know, obviously an interest, you know, I've kind of always been kind of looking for ways to make money. So that was kind of where it started. I was like, oh, this crypto thing, you know, kind of just explode Young hustler. by. Yeah, a bit of a hustler, a bit of a hustler. Um, I'm only in my like early 20s. So I was kind of like a teenager kind of in the last cycle. So I didn't have a ton to invest, but I kind of, I kind of got in a little, not too early, too early, kind of maybe mid 2017. And then I kind of done well, and then it done really well. And then it kind of rode the whole thing back down. So it's a pretty common story in crypto, but it taught me a lot learning from those mistakes. My main thing is that I was doing some e-commerce. I kind of don't do it as much anymore. Right now I'm kind of just doing research. And, you know, when I have time, I'm, you know, making videos on what Charles Hoskinson said, on various <laughs> <other> topics. <laughs> You, you definitely know what he's saying. You're doing pretty well on that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you're Every not word watching... that man says goes in my videos. <laughs> <laughs> when you when you're not listening to him intro from Colorado, uh, yeah, what other <laughs> over here in rainy Dublin? So I wish I was in rainy Warms, Dublin, Colorado. If you didn't yeah. pick up the accent, yeah, it is from Ireland. I want to know about your portfolio before we start talking about cardano <laughs> five coins to five million so obviously you know the coin that you know i'm most bullish on surprise surprise uh would be ada you know that's kind of the coin that i was talking about the most from like i think my first ever video it's no longer on youtube because it was very very bad but that first video was talking about cardano <laughs> and since then uh you know it's been the coin i've been talking about the most on a kind of a longer term time horizon there's very few coins on that because very few coins have kind of reached you know the level of kind of maturity and kind of where they have their kind of ducks in a row and they've kind of actually brought out their technology and they're not just kind of speculative. So coins you'd be holding for years and years and years, very few of them are there, but like there's some obviously solid coins. So, I'd, you know, you look at your Bitcoin, your Ethereum, Cardano, Chainlink, they'd be kind of the top four coins, more coins kind of, let's say they will do well in this one, then you'd kind of put in maybe um solana although you know a lot of the gains may have already been kind of made in solana you know how many run-ups is mm -hmm. it gonna have but you know it, it keeps surprising me so maybe a few more and then obviously i think polka dot um is kind of a dark horse right now uh i think it was just starting to kind of uh come back a little bit and then the market just slapped it back down um and then so i'm kind of more so focused on like a few different areas in crypto primarily so you know kind of gaming nfts and then just kind of smart contracts they're kind of like the safest areas but the ones that also make the more reliable gains so they would be the coins that are kind of making up the majority of my portfolio moving over to cardano let's let's have a little chat about that with the research that you've done on it i know we we love to give charles a little bit of flack here but um talking about strengths for ada compared to the other projects why would you choose ada as one of your top picks if you're looking at smart contract space people kind of they kind of look at one area or they look at another area they say oh well you know there's a lot of projects on ethereum or you know solana has a lot of transactions per second but mm -hmm. kind of what cardano does uh, first of all the overall vision i think for the next 10 years is the best vision out of any other smart contract crypto but then if you're looking at kind of governance you're looking at security you're looking at then the efficiency of the network, how fast the transactions are, how cheap there are. And then you also kind of factor in that it's the most decentralized. I think over a 10 year time horizon, that's just a very, very winning formula. And in the short and medium term, of course, it's a lot of speculation. It's our smart contracts being released. It's, you know, is it getting a new listing? There's not going to be one big winner. But in terms of the coin that I think is the most room to grow long term, uh, it's still Cardano for me. I often look at just the prices, so it's really good to hear about more around the fundamentals. And in terms of using ADA, especially with like their staking pool, 
it's I, I often say it's one of the easiest ones I've ever used. I'd probably say it is the easiest one that I've had to use. Icon was was easy, but it, it's just not as easy. I've used EOS. That was an absolute nightmare. But yeah, ADO has been one of the easiest things to use for, de- well, to stake, which means decentralization is easy and new investors, it makes it easy for them too. So I like that aspect of it. Going on to weaknesses of ADA, is Charles the weakness? What what are we looking at? What's the weakness of ADA? <laughs> yeah, well, if he says something bad, yeah, it's the weakness. In terms of weaknesses for any project, you know, like obviously Cardano, you know, is still in the very early stages. Like for most companies, if it was a traditional company, it would have been just starting, you know, like last week or something. But uh, obviously, because yeah. it's a cryptocurrency, it's able to do a nice yo and it's able to kind of be around for a long time. But we're still kind of in the very early stages of the crypto game in general. So absolutely, like, you know, it's not. And if you ask the Cardano team, I'm sure they'd agree that, you know, it's not OK. We have smart contracts out now. We can kind of just sit back and relax. It's this is the time where the most work is needed to kind of onboard more users, onboard more developers. So really, like the biggest threat to any of these platforms is just the fact that they won't be able to get developers and users. But if you look at kind of Cardano's marketing, it's pretty much the best. Now, obviously, you know, Ethereum is kind of the established competitor, so it doesn't really have to do as much as Cardano does. But I think Cardano's marketing and then even more so the fundamentals of Cardano are just the most solid. So over the long term, the best product is going to win. And I think that the best product right now is Cardano. And again, it's really just about making sure that the network continues to innovate and it is able to make it the best development experience and the best user experience. Cardano has a great community right now, but a lot of, you know, a lot of that, they haven't really started users using the network yet. So you have to make sure that that experience is great as well. Do you think one of the weaknesses are how long it takes Ada to do anything or, you know, Cardano yeah. to do anything? Yeah. yeah so obviously that's one of the biggest criticisms and you know it wouldn't be how i'd go about it like doing a ton of research papers but at the end of the day like it has paid off for cardano and if you're kind of looking over a 10 or 20 year period you do want something that's built to last so yes in kind of the short and medium term that does hold it back but again if we're looking at crypto mass adoption we're talking at least five to ten years away before most of the final users are interacting with the smart contract platform and as long as they're able to achieve those three things which i think they will be then they'll succeed if they're not able to do those three things then they'll fail do you see anything else in regards to the opportunities that they could sort of take market share or you know rise above quicker than some of the other competitors you know if you kind of look at where ethereum is now well, I'm not sure where it will be today, but, you know, kind of generally around that kind of like 400 billion range. I think Cardano's kind of, yeah. right. but kind of where you have kind of ETH bigger than all the competitors combined in five, in the next bull run, I don't think that'll be the case at all. So will Ethereum still be the biggest? Yes, probably. Um, I, I'd find it hard to believe that they're not unless they, they could kind of mess up in a big way. If maybe if ETH 2.0 isn't out then, then it'll be a different story. <laughs> But I do think that ETH will still be the biggest in the next bull run and probably the bull run after that because these things take a lot of time. But I do think which you, when you look at what Cardano is doing uh, in Africa when what they're potentially going to be doing in South America, and then you also combine it with kind of the global uh, the projects that will be launching on the network and that are already launching on the network, even though it's so young, I think that's a very, very positive indication. And as long as the network continues to grow in terms of fundamentals, then the price will appreciate. And in five years' time, you're going to see a very, very different situation. I think all cryptos, all solid cryptos, so your, you know, your ETH, your Cardano, your Polkadot, whatever they are, mm-hmm. it'll be kind of a more balanced distribution. It won't just be ETH as like, you know, this big monster that dwarfs all the other ones. All right, you think these are going to take some of the the dominance of ETH? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I don't, you know, particularly like the you know ETH killer narrative. I think you know uh, Charles Hoskinson said that in the past, but it's it's a good marketing thing. What would have to go wrong for Cardano for you to sell out and say I think it's over? You know, like what would have to go wrong in the project fundamentally? I'm constantly kind of looking and making sure you know is the network uh, continuing to grow? Is there exciting things still happening on the network? Up until now, it's kind of just been okay. Is smart contracts 
still on the still on the right timeline obviously been delayed a few times so like if in a year we're kind of looking back and there's not really that much development that will certainly be a question mark and it'll certainly be something that'll make me reconsider my position but right now you know you're kind of looking at very early days so again developers and users are king if we're looking even if it's a bear market you know end of next year there should still be a lot more development and a lot more users because crypto is not going back to where it was in 2018 2019 nfts are here gaming is here there's a lot of real world use cases right now but really you kind of would want to see that continually growing month over month right well i guess we could look to say what happened on eos or iota or icon or, or some of these things just look to projects which have gone through that stage of the hype and then the fade and just see what their metrics are doing over that period, whether they're gaining traction or not, and then we can yeah. possibly replicate uh, use that across to um, to Ada yeah, as well. Yeah, you kind of want to make sure, like, is it on the same track of is it on the ETH trajectory or is <laughs> yeah. it on the EOS trajectory? We yeah. are looking at price projections for Ada moving forward. <laughs> do you do much of that when it comes to price projections? Because you know you're mostly based um, on fundamentals. I don't think I've ever done a price prediction, but I'll do one for your channel if you want. <laughs> I need something for the thumbnail. I'm running out of content here. Yeah, <laughs> of course, the clickbait. <laughs> no, I, I've done plenty. I've done plenty in the past. So I've been, you know, you can kind of you can look at my videos from like March or April, um, and I'll pretty much be saying the same thing. So I've I was kind of looking at three to five dollars leading up to smart contracts, and then seven to ten dollars by the end of the year. Now, you know, we kind of barely scraped that three to five dollars leading up to smart contracts. The seven to ten dollars, it was kind of end of year, assuming that the bull run would end this year. So this was kind of obviously before we kind of had uh, you know, that the local peak back in April. So if we're kind of looking at uh, you know, a twin peak bull run where we have the next peak either later this year, well then I still think seven to ten dollars for this year. If we're looking at a situation where we're having the second half of the bull run or the second peak of the bull run um setting a new all-time high maybe let's say q1 or q2 in 2022 if we do have that extended cycle then that would be where i'd be looking for seven to ten dollars but the good news about that would be that would potentially even expand the range of where ada can go because this year i don't think we're going to get past we're certainly i don't think we'll get past 150k bitcoin even if it happens at the very end of the year december 31st but mm -hmm. it seems like we probably won't even we may we kind of may be looking at an 80 to 100k bitcoin so that kind of would yeah. give cardano kind of somewhat of a limitation um in terms of kind of maybe being you know somewhere around that kind of more seven dollar range but if we if the cycle extends till uh 2022 you'll have a bigger period of consolidation which means you kind of have more energy to run up all right that's a that's a fantastic thumbnail. It's given me an idea for a video. So stay tuned for my channel <laughs> yeah. where I do something like that. But in the meantime, cool. you can go and check out Sean's channel. Check out those videos. They're full of good content. Mate, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure talking about ADA and learning more about the fundamentals as I tend to look at the price all too often. Check the links down below. Like, subscribe, all the good stuff. Thanks again, man. Thanks. Thanks so much for having me. Catch you all later.